So, to what extent will human rights concerns be raised by the Foreign Minister? She says she will be flagging them. Let's talk to Sophie McNeil from Human Rights Watch. Thanks for your time. Look, let's go through our first... I guess, first of all, what normally happens in this situation. When we wouldn't expect some grandiose statement ahead of the meeting from Penny Wong, and even afterwards it would be presumably along the, along the lines of, you know, um, issues were raised. But do we need to be realistic about the extent to which she'll speak out behind closed doors, firm conversations, but afterwards we still need a relationship with our biggest trading partner? We do, Tom, but we have to remember that this is a government that the UN says uh, may be responsible for crimes against humanity. So this is a finding that Human Rights Watch has already made and we're very pleased that the UN finally released their report in August and to see that they have come to similar conclusions. So what we know about what the Chinese government is currently doing is that they have a, a um, system of mass arbitrary detention. The UN found... Uh, the evidence of torture, of forced labour, of cultural uh, decimation. This is the largest incarceration of people on the basis of their religion since the Holocaust. That's currently what's happening in China today to the Uyghur people and other Muslim minorities. So this isn't a side issue. Uh, we're very pleased that the foreign minister has already highlighted that human rights will be part of, of these talks. But mm. really, it has to be a central component. It, it has to be. When you say central component, though, I mean, again, we're not, we're not privy to the meeting. Say I'd love a camera in there. I can't see that happening anytime soon. And afterwards, Penny Wong, I'm sure, will be asked, you know, to what extent did you raise it? And she'll say, I raised the issue. But, again, would you understand her not grandstanding on it in, in public afterwards? Do we, are we just in the position, as ever in these meetings, we take the word of our politicians that they've raised something, but there's not much point in so-called megaphone diplomacy? We know that's not how Minister Wong operates and it has been um, really pleasing to see the effort that she has put into our region and the amount of trips that she has done and the conversations that she's been publicly having about human rights and uh, the importance of climate change in our region, which we know is affecting some of the most vulnerable communities and, and nations. So we do get a bit of an insight into what happens in these meetings and we have a lot of... Uh, yeah, uh, hope invested in the foreign minister. There's actually thousands of Australians from Minister Wong's home state of South Australia. These are Uyghur Australians who currently have family members arbitrarily detained in China. So we have the two cases that a lot of Australians know about, Cheng Lei, the journalist, and also Dr Heng Jun. Um, but we also have these family members of Australian citizens who they have not spoken to for years, um, children, husbands, mothers, so, sisters, I mean, the, the list is, is incredible. They, there's been no contact in many of these cases for at least five years. Some of these family members has, have been sentenced to decades in prison just for simply visiting um, foreign countries. So these are the kinds of cases that we want Minister Wong to specifically ask about and not just ask about them. We want her to present a list of these names of these missing um, family members of Australian citizens and permanent residents to present it to her Chinese counterpart and to ask for their freedom. So this is what's interesting. We did have who were described as um, survivors or victims of what you're alluding to there in terms of Uyghur Muslims and what's been happening in Xinjiang province in, in particular. Uh, here in Australia, Penny Wong didn't meet them but sent a representative, her, I believe her um, human rights advisor or some sort of similar title. Is that normal? What do we know around conventions around whether they would be met by a minister of the day or whether that's seen as a bit too hot diplomatically? Look, I think that was the last week of Parliament. I was there the same week. It was incredibly busy. Um, we know that this delegation did meet with uh, DFAT and they met with uh, other senior members of government. Um, but they did meet with the leader of the opposition and that was something that Minister Wong did when she was also the minister... Uh, sorry, the, the shadow uh, foreign minister. This is an issue that... Penny Wong has followed closely for years. As I mentioned, the Uyghur community in Australia is largely based in her home state. So she's very familiar with these issues. And there is a lot of um, hope riding on this visit. I mean, I get regular messages right. from Australians, from Chinese dissidents asking me, you know, expressing their deep concern about this trip. What do I think is going to happen? It's very hard to reassure them and, and let them know that, uh, that everything's going to be OK because they have so much hope invested in Minister Wong. So uh, we really hope that she 
puts this as a, a real centrepiece of the trip. And uh, we were disappointed, Tom, on Human Rights Day when the Australian government didn't announce sanctions on Chinese officials accused of crimes against humanity in Xinjiang. It's something that like-minded democracies have done. Um, the US, U the UK, Canada, it's disappointing mm. that China wasn't yeah, on that well, list. Well, just, just on that, is, would that be a bit... Would that be seen as a preemptive strike, though? If that happened ahead of this meeting, then suddenly the meeting is going to be a lot cooler, whereas you might see what concessions might be able to happen, and even with the two higher-profile Australians you were talking about, see what we can get there, then maybe that issue is revisited. That just seems more logical timing-wise. I think what we have to keep in mind is that e even if uh, these Australians are released and even if the family members of these Uyghur Australians are released, I, I'm not confident right. that that's going to ch change the trajectory of where Beijing is headed here. And uh, we want to see a, a firm plan from the Albanese government of what they are going to do in order to hold the Chinese government accountable for their mass human rights abuses. So that does include okay. things like sanctions and also uh, ensuring we're not importing goods made of forced labour, which is something Australia also hasn't done and is lagging behind other countries. Got to leave it there. Thank you for your time, Sophie. We'll see what happens with Penny Wong uh, after this meeting in China.